Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so with this I think we can now go ahead with oligosaccharides. I gave you a brief discussion on monosaccharides. They are the simplest sugar. Now the next is oligosaccharides. So these are carbohydrates that yield 2 to 10 monosaccharide units on hydrolysis. So they can be hydrolyzed further and they can give 2 to 10 monosaccharides unit. That is why, the, as I said, the term oligo means few. So that few refers to 2 to 10 here in this case. Now carbohydrates that yield 2 monosaccharide units, they are called disaccharides. Carbohydrates which yield 3 monosaccharide units are called trisaccharides, 4 tetra and that ways. So they are further classified as disaccharides, di is 2, tri is 3, tetra is 4 and so on. Depending upon the number of monosaccharides they provide on hydrolysis. Now you understand what is hydrolysis. You add water and cut down the oligosaccharide. Most common of these oligosaccharides are disaccharides. So we will talk specifically about disaccharides and we will also take some very very common examples of disaccharides which uh, we often use in our day to day life. So some of the common examples of disaccharides we will see it very soon. So here lactose is a disaccharide. Lactose is the sugar which is present in milk. It is found in milk. Now, if you hydrolyze lactose, hydrolyze means you will add water. So, this is the process of hydrolysis. So, which bond will be broken? This is one sugar unit, this is another. So, if you see here, this is your COC bond, that is the glycosidic bond. Now, when you add water, this gets broken into OH here and OH here. So, you get one galactose and one glucose. Now one in another important thing to note here is that it is not always necessary that on hydrolysis both the units or both the monosaccharides which are formed has to be the same. They can be same, they can be different. So it depends on the composition of the disaccharide. So a disaccharide can be made up of two same monosaccharides or it can be made up of two different monosaccharides. So here in this case, they are two different. This is galactose and this is glucose. Both of them are monosaccharides. And what is lactase? Lactase is the enzyme in presence of which this reaction take place. So we are clear with whatever we have discussed so far. Now let us move on to polysaccharides. Polysaccharides, which on hydrolysis will yield a large number of monosaccharides mm -hmm. unit. That is, it will give more than 10 monosaccharide units. So they are called polysaccharides. Examples would be starch, cellulose, glycogen, gums. These are some of the examples of polysaccharides. I think some of these are quite familiar to you. When I talk of cellulose, where have you heard the name cellulose before? Exactly. While we were talking about the plant cells, we talked about the cell wall which is exclusively present in plant cells and the cell wall is made up of cellulose. So this is the same cellulose. It is a polysaccharide. Talking of starch, where have you heard the name starch? Food is stored in the plant in the form of starch. So these are the things where we have heard all these terms but we never knew what they are exactly. So starch is again a polysaccharide. Now here on the screen, if you look at the structures of starch and cellulose, what do you see? You can actually make out the monosaccharide units. This is one monosaccharide. This is another monosaccharide. This is another monosaccharide and so on. And they are all bounded by this glycosidic bond. So this is the glycosidic bond. So in this case, what happens here also the process of hydrolysis take place if you want to break it down. But here the process will need, I um, mean, you'll have to repeat the hydrolysis. Like there I was telling you, like if you give one molecule of water, this one bond will get broken. Now when you have so many bonds like this, so definitely you need some enzymes to make the reaction faster. You might, the amount of water and the environmental reaction conditions that might vary. But the process will still remain the same. So here also hydrolysis will break starch into all the constituent monosaccharides. Similarly in case of cellulose also you can see the same thing. So if you look at starch and cellulose, 
if you look at their formula, that is the same. But it is just that the way they are arranged is different. So their structural arrangement is different and because of which there is a lot of difference between their properties. So when you think of a cellulose, what comes to your mind? Anything like grass, anything like plants, they have a lot of cellulose. When it comes to starch, what comes to your mind? Something like bread, which has starch. Now, do you see a lot of similarities between a bread and a grass? No, right? Because the properties are extremely different just because of their different arrangements of the carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So this is about the polysaccharides. So now, another important thing which I would like to mention here is when we talk about monosaccharides that is glucose, fructose, erythrose. So these monosaccharides are basically used as instant source of energy. For example, you are feeling too weak or you have done a lot of exercise and you are suddenly very tired. What do you do? You drink a glass of glucose and you get some energy. So these kind of, I mean, I'm not talking about glucose in that sense that it is a carbohydrate, but I'm trying to say is monosaccharides which are there in your body, whether it is glucose or it is fructose, they give you instant energy. If you need some energy, immediately that is provided. But they do not act as energy storage. But polysaccharides act as energy storage. So they can store energy for later use. For example, now why is that? That is because glucose cannot be further hydrolyzed. So glucose is already there in its simplest form. So it can be utilized immediately. So that is an instant source of energy. But when it comes to the polysaccharides, for example, starch or gly glycogen, you just cannot utilize them as it is. Because if you want to utilize them, first they need to be hydrolyzed and broken down into monosaccharides and only then they can be utilized. So polysaccharides are basically used as storehouse of energy and that is why starch is prominently the storehouse of energy in plants. So starch is used for energy storage in plants and glycogen is used for energy storage in animals. So because of their structures, you can understand why uh, polysaccharides are used as energy storehouse of energy, whereas monosaccharides are used as uh, instant sources of energy. So this was a brief this uh, introduction to all the three types of carbohydrates, monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. Now we will spend some time to understand some examples of each of these types. Now here comes another important thing. Polysaccharides are not sweet in test. Hence they are also called as non-sugars. Now say, therefore I was telling you right. Even though most of the uh, uh, carbohydrates are sweet in taste. But there are some which are not. But still they have saccharides in their name. So polysaccharides are those. So they are not at all sweet in taste. That is why they are often known as non-sugars. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.